Well, what's up traders? Andrew O'Connell here with Pristine Capital. Welcome to your market recap video. It is October 28th of 2022, TGIF. It is Friday. And what did we tell you, team? <laughs> the Fed pivot news came out yesterday and that really carried the market higher despite the weakness out of Amazon. So remember, we talked about in last night's video saying, you know, the market could really rally even if we get a dip in the morning. Let's see if that dip is bought. And we mentioned the strength and the small caps that that was odd. And yeah, I'm pretty sure the cat is out of the bag. And investors do believe that the Fed is going to mention something along the lines of a pivot. So let's take a look and see how these box scores did. We had the S&P 500. It finished out the session up 2.38%. We had our NASDAQ QQQ. Remember this. Apple had a relatively weak earnings report. I guess it was better than the rest. Uh, Amazon, weak earnings. Meta, weak earnings. Google, weak earnings. And the NASDAQ was up 3.06%. Our IWM small caps were up 2.27%. Dogs of the Dow were up 2.53%. Our ARK Innovation ETF was up 2.69%. And the TLT long bond ETF, this was the big divergence. It actually finished the session down 0.69%. Now, if you look at our range scores, almost everything closed on the upper end of its day's range, except this TLT bond ETF. Now, volatility continues to get crushed. We'll pull up the charts of the VIX in just a moment. And to be honest, I can't see any other reason than the market front running a pivot. And now here's the nuance. Let's say the Fed, you know, they we got the signal from Daly, who said like she changed up her rhetoric on the pace of rate hikes. Then we got the Federal Reserve communicating through their correspondent at the Wall Street Journal. I believe his name is Nick Timros. He really just reiterated to the market, hey, the Fed is thinking about adjusting the pace of the rate hikes, et cetera, et cetera. And then we got that BlackRock article. So what's great is if the Fed is going to slow down their pace, that's great news, right? But now the news got leaked so far in advance that I think the potential scenario that we have is everyone buys stocks into the event and then if the event doesn't go so well i actually believe there's a lot more risk heading into the event if the market ends up rallying now we had positive breadth today 88 percent advancers in the small caps we had 73.6 percent total up volume and the trend model remains at a plus three in terms of after hours movers not a whole lot. You can see some more of these speculative stocks like Silvergate, uh, Lemonade. I remember that stock. That was like a, an insurance company. Everyone treated like it was a technology stock. Names like Asan. Those are rallying in the after hours. Uh, in terms of today's economic data, we did get the PCE, which is the Fed's preferred inflation measure. And the PCE came out in line with expectations. So not bad, not good. In line, that's all we needed. And then pending home sales month over month down 10.2%. That is huge. And it really just goes to show the housing market is slowing and the housing market makes up a huge component of the inflation numbers. That is important. In terms of the VIX futures term structure, we are no longer inverted. And that was as of the last couple of days. And that potentially coincides with, the, with when the news of the pivot came out. Let's take a look here. Uh, and this was from, you know, we went over this on Friday. This was daily beginning her pivot language. Uh, Finvis heat map. Amazon ended up only closing on the session down 6.8%. As of last night, it was down like 20%. And you can see we really just had green across the screen. Apple was a big standout in terms of the mega cap tech stocks. It was up 7.55%. And I got to say, Tesla did not get much love. The deal between Twitter and Tesla, or Twitter and Elon Musk, excuse me, that actually went through, it was consummated, and shareholders of Tesla, I guess, were not huge fans of it. There was a story out that said Tesla engineers were going to be coming to Twitter and taking a look at the code base. If I was a big-time Tesla shareholder, I wouldn't be super thrilled that the workforce from Tesla is being diverted to Twitter. In the grand scheme, is it a big deal? I don't really think so, but for whatever reason, that stock did not do so great. I do believe there's a good chance this one turns around next week after this Twitter news is finally in the rear view. 
In terms of sectors, what really stood out today? We had the ARC Genomics Fund, it was up 3.61%. We had XLK, which is really the mega cap technology ETF, it was up 4.35%. So definitely want to keep an eye on those mega cap tech stocks. When the mega cap tech stocks are leading, it is incredibly difficult to outperform the S&P 500 because they are just such big components in the index. What else do we have? Semiconductors were also up 3.92%, not too shabby. In terms of style factors, we had Minval leading the pack up 2.67%. And you can see we had defensives, they were up 2.46%. High beta was up 2.48%. It really just looks like a pretty broad-based rally. Let's take a look. In terms of common stock trades, oh man, Bed Bath & Beyond just did me dirty on day one of holding this stock. This is something that happens every once in a blue moon, very rare. I bought this stock yesterday. I took on a small position just in case we get some sort of meme stock run. Um, ended up closing this one out at 474. I paid 516. We got the news that they were going to be doing a, a share offering. And, you know, that's dilutive. It typically, you know, the value of the company goes down when the company issues more shares. As soon as I see that news, if I'm invested in a company and they do a share offering, I immediately, first thing I do, sell the company. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. I know there's probably a tidal wave of sellers that are about to come in. I saw the news within about 30 seconds of seeing it. I was out of the stock. It just happens. That's really just part of the game. Uh, I didn't really think too much of it. Next, I got along the Global E Common Shares for 2588. Shopify reported good earnings uh, yesterday. Global E is very closely integrated with that company. So I got along those global E common shares. It also just broke a downward trend line, which is pretty cool. And then on options trades, I actually closed out my ARK Innovation ETF, November 18, 36 strike calls for $3.76. I would paid $2.45 for those, so nice little winner. Uh, and I just wrote, we have FOMC coming on Wednesday. Bias is still to the upside, uh, but wouldn't be surprised if we got some volatility into the event and or after it. Also the bonds, they weren't confirming today's move. So speaking of those bonds, let's take a look and we'll also pull up the headline indices. Before we break for today, we are going to be putting out our pristine capital weekend market analysis video and our pristine capital weekend watch list video. Those are going to be out on Sunday morning. If you're interested in getting those, tune in, go to pristinecapital.net. Anyway, S&P 500 was up 2.71%. We're now trading above the 50 day simple moving average and above this monthly point of control. Do I think at some point we're going to retest the 50? Absolutely. It's pretty common where you do end up retesting that key level. Now let's take a look at our NASDAQ. NASDAQ up 3.47% getting back inside of this monthly value area. Russell 2000 up 2.66% and getting above that monthly point of control. And then we had our Dow Jones up 2.86%, actually breaking out of value. This one is ahead of the pack. Remember, there's only 30 stocks in the Dow. There's a higher representation in industrials and financials and in energy. And those three groups have been doing pretty well as of late. Now, let's take a look at the ARK Innovation ETF as well. This one also hit a significant milestone, breaking back into the monthly value area. I think the ARK Innovation ETF has been left for dead. There's not many investors thinking that this one can actually have a run. And we are seeing that it is starting to put in a nice basing pattern. So that is good. And then Global E, check this one out. This one, I bought the dip in it today. Check it out. And we have, you, you could just draw in like a downward trend line. We're starting to move above that. We put in a hammer candle today. Now let's take a look at the VIX and then we'll also take a look at bonds. So the VIX was down almost 6%. Remember, for so long, even when the market rallied, the VIX was super stubborn and it remained bid. So why is it that suddenly everyone is panicking out of their protection? I do believe that the news of the potential Fed pivot or whatever you want to call it, I think that leaking is really the reason why the VIX is so subdued now. But what I thought was pretty odd was that bonds ended up selling off. These 30-year treasury futures put in a big red candle, so not really the best look after a few days of bouncing. And then the 10-year treasury futures did the same thing. They closed below the 20-day simple moving average. 
So typically when you get like a blow off move in equities and bonds are not confirming it, it's fine. I mean, you can have like today, we had a day where equities still did pretty good, but you don't want to see that trend just continuing and continuing. That's where the rally becomes, you know, really under pressure. So I just took off, you know, some options trades. That was really it for today. Now that was a lot. Remember, we're going to be putting out our weekend market analysis and we can watch this video. Thank you so much for tuning in tonight and we'll see you all next time.